Hey guys, we are in Cape Charles at the State Park uh, this week. This is, uh, I'm gonna mess it up, the Kitchapeak State Park or something like that. Be, maybe somebody can explain how to say the, the name. Um, anyway, it is right above the KOA at Cape Charles and Cape Charles is on the edge of Virginia. It's a little island um, above Virginia Beach and there's an intercoastal highway with like tunnels and bridges and stuff that connect it basically up toward like the Maryland and New Jersey area. And this is uh, the beach for the state park and they have camping here also, obviously. The beach um, is state park access only. Um, I guess you could hike the edge of the beach somehow, um, but as far as I know, you have to pay $7 um, to come here if you just want to go to the beach. They make you pay a parking fee, um, even if you're just going to drive around. That's a Virginia state park thing. And then I guess they have a state park pass that you can get. We're camping here, so we don't have to pay any of the parking um, fees. The, um, the parking lot's over here. It's kind of small, to point that out. Um, I don't know if they count the number of cars from the campground to so the number of cars that they emit, but we couldn't find a spot um, to park at that was close to the beach. We parked way, way, way super far away, um, but we unloaded everything at the beach. Um, being a state park also, they don't allow golf carts, meaning you see a lot of people carrying their stuff like two miles to the campground um, as really um, normal as that is. Um, some people, like us, they drive their truck down and unload stuff, but that is definitely something a little different. Um, the water behind me seems like um, it's not as shallow as the KOA that's over there, and this would be kind of a little contrasty because that other um, campground is right next to us, like a couple miles away. Um, the other one has the sandbars, you can walk out two miles or whatever. This one has these like cruisers, like they're like um, ships that they grounded to make like kind of a fake bay um, to try to um, prevent the, the waves from crashing so much. Um, so anyway, um, this is a beach. It's, it's a very nice beach um, for Virginia and the weather, um, it's gonna thunderstorm like in an hour, maybe. That's why it looks kind of maybe dark um, in the background, I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll have to let you know how, how dark it is. A um, Couple of odd things to keep them in mind um, here. You're not allowed to launch kayaks and paddle boards or um, canoes or anything from the swimming beach. Um, instead, they have this little area over here next to their, to their dock where they want you to launch at. It looks like they also have rentals um, of kayaks and stuff, so if you didn't bring your own. And they have two beaches, um, so maybe I'll go shoot some footage of the other beach. This is a swimming beach, so this is like the regular beach. Then there's a parking lot, and then on the other side of the parking lot, there's a dog beach. Um, and I couldn't see the dog beach from the parking lot, so I think it's kind of far away. I'm not really 100% sure. And then um, way, way down there, um, you might be able to see some little kind of wooden things coming out of the, the forest. That is a very, very long, well, I don't want to say very long. I want to maybe guess quarter of a mile. Um, wooden, like, walkway with stairs that goes to the campground. So you can walk directly from the campground to the beach, like a pretty long distance, um, through these, like, wooden, um, kind of palleted uh, ramps and, and, and steps and stuff. So anyway. All right, so we're gonna head down to the dog beach. Um, there is a ramp from the parking lot that takes you down to it, and it's, it's pretty close as you can see. And then um, we are at the front of the parking lot. Next to me is this fishing pier. Um, even though it's not a pier, it's a big fishing area. Um, it says pier, but I guess there's a pier somewhere around here. I don't know. Um, but anyway, the big flat area and you can see the boats that they have that are lined out um, to kind of block the waves. And then over there is the dock and the, um, to launching for launching the boats that we showed you earlier and the regular beach. So let's run down there to the dog beach. No one guy told me, oh, that's a vlogger here. <laughs> hey everybody, so this is the dog beach at the state park. And it's actually a lot closer to the parking lot than I was expecting. There's just a little walkway here. Um, I'll show some footage of us walking down it or something. Um, and then behind me is the pier kind of fishing area. Um, the big difference between this part, um, beach and the other beach is this one um, allows dogs, which that's a one plus. But the other thing is it's much narrower um, in width. It's about one um, umbrella width. Like really like, it doesn't really make sense to have like a, like a row one and a row two with umbrellas. Where on the other one you could easily stack like two or three umbrellas in a row of, you know, sitting there with people in front of people in front of people where this is just so much narrower. Um, it's a much, it, it won't accept as many people, so to speak. So yeah, um, if you want to check out the dog beach without actually coming down on the beach, part of it, like I was saying, you can just walk down the pier and then kind of look over and see how populated it is. Um, if you want to run down here and check it out before you, you haul all your stuff down here since it's smaller. And 
we will continue to kind of explore. Okay, so this is the campground, and uh, this is our site right here. I guess I'll start with it. Um, the sites here are extremely wide, and that you can see here we have the truck kind of tilted, the campers tilted. There's enough room, if there wasn't for the tree and the fire pit, enough room for like another camper probably next to us, and then all the way over to that power pole um, where the water spigot is. I mean, it, it very, very wide. You can see people here have their boats parked um, with their truck and easily we have the truck parked in front of the camper even though I have it tilted and there's a huge amount of grassy space um, behind our camper which means that uh, pretty much almost any length camper and almost any width camper probably could fit in the site that we have um, but what makes it a little unique um, is they have these trees and these markers and the road is not terribly wide even though you can see people driving on the grass um, meaning probably the limit on getting campers into this campground is going to be based on how tight you can um, turn them um, to get them in between these obstacles. Um, but the sites themselves are very, very extremely generous. Not just this one site. Look at this gray wolf here. Um, there's a post there. There's another post there. You can just put three campers in there. Um, yeah, yeah, very, very um, nice and wide campground. Now the campground itself, there's some, um, I think, three rows here, A, B, and C. So you enter over here. And then there is the A, which loops around to the B, and then the C is a dead end. And I think the C, I think, is the only one with um, full hookups. And then all the other sites, like ours, is just water and electric. And they have two dump stations, maybe more than two. They have a bunch of dump stations up at the entrance of the campground. And you can U-turn there and come back in if you, if you need to dump for some reason. Um, so specifically us, we're in a handicapped spot, um, and let me talk about handicapped spots for just for a second in case you don't know about them. Um, at state parks, they have some of the spots marked handicap, meaning when you reserve your site, you should not be reserving the handicapped site unless you're handicapped. However, if the entire campground is full and you're not handicapped, then you have the right to reserve the handicapped site because there's no other sites and they're totally um, fine with that. You can go read the FAQ or whatever and most state parks and stuff, um, that's that's the way it works. So anyway, we booked it over the holiday weekend and the state park is pretty hard to get and we got it with um, the handicapped site. So anyway, the, um, the space on the site, so let me just kind of finish that off. The A area looks like it's kind of um, short on the B area, the odd numbered sites, which are these on this side, um, have that big green space on the back. And then the C's that are even would have the big green space on the back. Um, so B odd C evens, yeah, that's right. B odd C e evens would be the ones that have a big grassy space. And then all the other ones would be more like trees and stuff and a little um, shorter, so to speak. Um, and that noise that you keep hearing in the background, I don't know if you hear, can hear a popping noise every so often. That's actually the, um, the screen door in the bathroom. It seems pretty loud, like they have a big, um, big spring on it. So you're going to hear a little popping noise if you're pointed near the bathroom. Um, if you're, I don't know, three or four sides away, probably you can't hear it. Um, but that's basically what you need to know about this campground. Um, there's no pool, there's no hot tub, there's no bar, there's no restaurant. So if you compare this to the KOA that's just down the street, the KOA is about three times as much money, but they have typically a bar. They didn't have one when we were there because they didn't have a license yet. They have a restaurant, they have a pool, um, they have a hotel there too. They don't have that here. Um, if you leave the state park and just want to drive around and go like kind of do some stuff, there's McDonald's and a grocery store right outside the gate um, of the KOA of this place, maybe five minutes away. I think a Chinese restaurant, it was, uh, um, we had it a couple years ago, and I wasn't impressed with it. I don't know if it's any better. Um, there is a humongous gas station nearby that has like chicken, um, a chicken restaurant in it. Um, some off-brand, um, like similar to KFC, but it's not KFC. Um, but it's a pretty sizable gas station. It has diesel gas and diesel pumps, and you know, like the kind of big area for like big rigs to fit. It's not a truck stop. Um, and then they have like all like kind of like kind of a mini mini grocery store sort of. And then if you want to go like maybe 20, 30 minutes away beyond that, there is the downtown um, area of Cape Charles, which has all the little kind of shops and stuff. And we'll throw some video footage of us um, in that area next, I guess. Hey, so we made it down to the Cape Charles area um, of downtown. And it's all these neat little shops that you want to walk around and check out. 
and uh, this is a surf shop for instance that we went in um, but they did have a, brewer, a couple breweries and restaurants and just all kinds of neat um, spots we parked in a regular spot and this is buskies that we're about to go to um, but i did see that they had oversized parking um, available also and this is, was the cider tasting that we did and we actually did 12 flights which for two of us seemed like a little bit too much because one of us got pretty trashed and the other one um, was driving so here we are um, tasting the um, the different uh, ciders and they had music playing in the background I didn't want to get a copyright violation uh, so that's why I, I'm kind of muted out the audio um, and the chops on the side um, I'm actually filming this on my um, sunglasses believe it or not and um, this is a resolution that you get off the sunglasses if anybody was um, curious about the Ray-Bans um, that are made for Facebook so anyway we were tasting all these different ciders and uh, you can basically pick um, which ones you want off the wall and then how big of a flight you want and we wanted to taste all of them so that's that's what we did um, and like I was saying I think I maybe overdid it just a little bit and uh, so afterwards we decided to go find some food um, they don't serve food here um, with the cider they just sell like the chips and the um, crackers or whatever and uh, nuts and stuff like that um, so prepare yourself I guess so of, of course you know after you do drinking you go from there to another bar which is what we did um, but here we actually had food um, mostly and then um, Kimberly ended up basically driving me home um, pretty drunk uh, but this is uh, the um, Irish restaurant that we went to 